Well, hello children and hello mums and dads if you're joining with the children this evening in our Bible at Bedtime story. Uh, we're not in the story hut again today because it's far too cold and wet and windy out there. So we're just in our living room here in Flint. Um, yeah, I say Flint because I can't be anywhere else. This is where I am now. Can I teach you a huge, great, big, massive, long word? It's about that long. And the word is omnipresent. Have a go at saying it. Omnipresent. Go on, David, you have a go. Omnipresent. Oh, he didn't do it. Come on, David. Om I'll say it on my oh, own. Oh, go on, on your own then. Omnipresent. Oh, omnipresent. Well done. Well, omni means all or every and present means here. Sometimes when you do the register, you have to say present. It just means here. God is omnipresent. He's everywhere. He's in Flint. But he's also in Africa and Argentina. He's watching over us all, all the time. I'm so glad that God is omnipresent. But I'm not and you're not because we're in our bodies. We can only be in one place at one time. And in our story today, David has to decide where to be. And I wonder what you'll think of his decision. It's a tricky one. We've come to a point in our stories about David when Samuel, do you remember Samuel, the boy who listened? Well, very, very old man. He has finally passed away. He's died and he's gone to be with his father in heaven, which is lovely for him, but very sad for everyone else because Samuel had been very, very kind and good, and he brought God's message to the people. Even Saul was sad. He did rather love Samuel. He didn't love what Samuel had to say. He didn't want to obey it, but he was missing him. And so was David. And David was in a very difficult position, wasn't he? He was going to be the next king, but Saul is still king, and Saul hates him so much, he's after him, he wants to kill him. And David had to decide where to be. Should he live in Israel, albeit in danger because of Saul, or should he go and live with Saul's enemies, the Philistines? What would you have done? Well, he decided to go and live with Saul's enemies. And that's where our story begins. I'm on the wrong page. You can find this story in 1 Samuel, chapter 27. One of the Philistine rulers was called Achish. It's a funny name, isn't it? Achish. There we are. And he took a liking to David. He thought that he and his men would be useful allies. And so he gave them a fortress town. The fortress town of Ziklag. And this would be a place where David's men and their wives and their families could live in safety. Well, David would go on raiding expeditions for Achish, bringing him all kinds of loot. He let Achish think that these raids were made on Israel. It wasn't true though. In fact, David was raiding the nations around who were also Israel's enemies. When the Philistines prepared for battle against Israel, Achish asked David and his men to fight with him as his special bodyguard. Did you get that? Did you hear what happened then? So the Israelites are going to go into battle against Achish and Achish has asked David and his men to help him. Ooh, that's a tricky one, isn't it? Well, David pretended that he was um, ready to fight against his own people. He had begun by deceiving Achish, and now it was too late to tell the truth. Oh, I think we call that a tangled web, don't we? David and his men left their families at Ziklag and marched to the front line. When the other Philistine rulers saw David's fighters, they were horrified. What are those Israelites doing here? They said to Achish. Oh, you don't have to worry about David, Achish reassured them. He's completely loyal to me. He will fight well for us. Don't you believe it, his friends insisted. Once the battle begins, he will change sides and fight for our enemy, Israel. 
Send him away at once. And reluctantly, Achish called David over. And Achish said to him, Well, I trust you completely, he told him. But the other leaders will not have you. So please, take your men back to Ziklag. David pretended to be disappointed, but really, oh, he was so thankful. God had come to his rescue, although he didn't deserve it. You know, the Bible is God's word and it teaches us the truth. It's not pretty stories. Very often it's not pretty at all. It's about ordinary people, ordinary sinners like you and me, getting themselves into all sorts of difficult situations. And David had got himself into a very difficult situation, hadn't he? He'd chosen to make his camp with the enemy Philistines who, who hated God. I have every sympathy with him because, of course, over here in Israel, he was in great danger. But God completely understands and God came to his rescue so that he didn't have to fight against the people of God. That would have been awful, wouldn't it? So it's a strange story, but it reminds us, I think, that um, we need to decide whose side we're on. And if we're following Jesus, we need to be with Jesus and with his people. That's not to say we can't be friends with other people, of course. But sometimes we do have to come down and make a decision to follow Jesus or not to follow Jesus. So a strange story and there's more to it because something happens when we meet again tomorrow to the people in Ziklag. Ooh. Ooh. So are you ready for the next part of the story? Come back tomorrow and you'll hear more about what happens in that fortress town. But God is with David. We go through some strange times in our lives, but if we've made um, a friend of the Lord Jesus Christ, and if we've become a follower of the Lord, he will be with us in all our circumstances, good and bad. Thank you very much for joining me today. Uh, we're just going to say a prayer now, so hands together and eyes closed. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you understand us. We do some strange things and we get ourselves into difficult situations very often, Lord, in this life. But we thank you, Lord, that if we come to you and ask for your help, you will help us indeed. And we thank you that you were with David at this very strange and difficult time. And we thank you for our Lord Jesus Christ, who's promised to be our friend and to be with us through all things. Thank you for him, in Jesus' name. Amen. So we're just going to do the blessing. La, la, the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you safe. The Lord give you his peace till we meet again. Amen. Bye-bye, everyone. See you soon.